brother was unbelievable. He was a fierce, fierce competitor. Well, I didn't try to do anything. It's when you're out there, it's a matter of, you know, the survival of the fittest. Usually a running back breaks the line of scrimmage and looks for the end zone. Jimmy looked for the first safety he could run over. I just tried to play at a very high level of intensity and play to my potential. He liked to hit people. He's got a body that was built for hitting people. You know, there'd be a nice hole here. He'd rather bounce off of this guy and then hit the hole. You know, he liked to punish people. I just tried to play to my maximum ability, and I, I played very, very aggressive, and I played within the bounds of the rules of the game. And then when anybody tackled him, it was an insult. And if he bit them, or punched them in the groin, or pushed their face in the mud, fine. If they were trying to get me upset or get me mad or for me to start a fight and to get thrown out of a game, then I can't be, a, you know, a good football player sitting on the sidelines ejected from a football game. So I just let my performance speak for me. But those of us that had to play against those guys, we were up there begging Jimmy, leave the guy alone, you know, just get back in the huddle because he's getting ready to destroy my head because you're chewing on his ankle again. I'm certainly not trying to punish or hurt or inflict pain on a, uh, on a on an opponent. Oh, sure. Jimmy will deny it, but he bit guys that tackled him. Where did you find all this research on me where I would scream and yell and, huh? I don't recall any of these interviews or, or this happening uh, during my career. Maybe, you sure you have the right uh, ball carrier? See, that was all part of growing up for him. You know, he was an obscure running back from LSU, you know. Billy Cannon was the star. Nobody knew Jimmy Taylor, the running back. It was his last game as a rookie. Finally let him play, we were completely out of it. And Taylor ran over everybody. Gained 170 yards on his own with no blocking. You know, he killed people. He ran over them, around them. Lombardi came in and saw this performance, and immediately he was our fullback. This was his way to become known, you know. He would show you that he could run over a guy bigger than he was and punish him. You know, I'd rather punish him than punish me, you know. He started to grow up. He started to become a star, and he liked it. Jimmy Taylor never could remember anybody's first name, so he called him Roy or some other things that I can't mention. He'd, he'd walk down the hall and he'd say, Hi, Roy. How's it going, Roy? Good to see you, Roy. Good morning, Roy. To everybody. I didn't believe in any gimmicks at all. No superstition, no frills. Just knock down hard-fought football when that's where it's going to be played. It's combat, and you have to know that you're going you're gonna to be subjected to pain or to suffering. So it's a matter of accepting all of this up front saying, well, it is going to be painful. In the training or in the conditioning is where you, in your preparation. He was the greatest conditioned athlete that I had ever been around when Lombardi would have the grueling grass drills for which he was so famous. He could never make Jimmy tired. And then we run our 200 yards. Jimmy, he said, uh, don't breathe so hard. We want to set a good example for the rookies. I said, what do you mean? He said, you're a veteran now. We want to set a good example, and you're huffing and puffing. I said, well, gosh, I got to breathe. I need oxygen. I said, what do you expect me to do? He said, just blow it out. But he would do all of that running, I mean, all those grass drills, and he was not breathing hard. He was just absolutely in perfect condition, and it was a test of courage to him. And I enjoyed football because of the competition and the combat and the uh, pain and the suffering. I'd probably do it, uh, do it the same way. Jimmy Taylor, toughest guy in football.